Hey everyone, it's Dang Mel, and today I'm doing something I've never done on my channel, but I love these videos so much, and that's like a true crime, missing person, spooky story kind of thing. So the videos I watch most on YouTube are vlogs, true crime videos, and ASMR. I've tried vlogs, gonna try ASMR. I love ASMR. And now I'm gonna be trying to try. I'm going to be trying a true crime video. Now, if you don't know what true crime videos are, I think you know what the words true crime mean. Like, they're true stories of a crime. So that could be missing persons cases, John or Jane Doe cases, which are when they don't know who the people are, murders, solved cases, like where they find out what happened to a missing person, missing people come back. So today I thought I'd start with like a little milder case. It's really old from the 1900s and it's probably just an unfortunate accident. Or is it? Spooky, 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 spooky. <laughs> Mixing ASMR into it. So yes, I was kind of experimenting on my channel. Let me know if you're excited for ASMR. Let me know if you like ASMR. Let me know if you like true crime videos. There's three girls on YouTube that I love that do it very well. Their names are Danielle. Eleanor and Georgia and I will leave their links down below. They are so good and they like tell it podcast style and I'm scared because I have a whole script written out and I'm gonna like try to memorize it and then look at the camera so it flows but wow I should put together like probably a blooper reel of what's about to happen but I am going to try my best. I'm gonna try to be serious. I cannot promise that I will be serious but if I do crack a joke I'm not meaning it in like an ill-mannered way and I just want to let you know that I got all this information from the internet and the internet alone and videos but like YouTube videos so internet and I don't mean to disrespect anybody in this video I hope you guys know that today we're gonna to be covering the case of the Flannan Lighthouse missing keepers this was a story that happened in the 1900s where three men just vanished out of thin air and we're gonna find out why this happened so let's get started. On December 7th, 1900, Robert Muirhead, who was the superintendent of the Northern Lighthouse Board, dropped off his three colleagues and friends who were Thomas Marshall, James Ducat, and William MacArthur to the island of Island Moor, which was a little islet off the coast of Flannan Islands, which was on the north side of Scotland. So basically these three men were going to be there for two weeks and then Robert Muirhead and his team would come back and drop off one man who would take the place of one man and it just worked in shifts because three people had to be at the lighthouse at all times to work it and man it to run it functionally as a lighthouse. So Robert Muirhead dropped the three men off and as he was going back to the main boat, he was waving to the men, not thinking that that would be the last time that anybody ever saw these men. So before we go into the disappearance of the men, we need to talk about the island itself because it has like a lot of history and it's super weird and yeah. The Flannan Lighthouse was on the islet. Remember that's a sublet of Flannan Islands. It's a little island by itself and it had mostly been uninhabited. And the lighthouse was named after St. Flannan, who was the 7th century Irish priest. The locals in other islands were really suspicious of this island, and although they would drop off sheep to graze there, they never thought it was a good idea to stay the night, and no one ever did. Sheep herders often referred to Island more as the other country because it was just so supernatural. And other than sheep, there was one more thing on the island before the lighthouse got built and it was a little chapel that was built by St. Flannan himself and this chapel was weird. There was said to be people that had visited the island and they had never worshipped or prayed or religious in their life but once they got to the island they would fall to their knees and worship in circles around the island. Frightening. So during the 1890s, the Northern Lighthouse Board decided to build a lighthouse on Island Moor because it was the largest island of Flannan Islands. And you know, they you need a lighthouse to show where land is and rocks is and stuff. It took about four years to build because it was so difficult to get supplies there because the weather conditions were always so bad. And it was finally completed on December 7th, 1899. And obviously it only used visual signals to other islands if it needed to communicate because it was a completely wireless 
lighthouse. So some strange things started happening around December 15th, 1900. And remember the men went to the island on December 7th, 1900. A captain of SS Arc Archtor, hope I'm saying that right, was sailing from Philadelphia to Edinburgh and he passed by the island of Island Moor and he noticed that the lighthouse was completely dark, which obviously is bad because how was he supposed to know there was land around it, but he just remembers looking and seeing it so ominously. Is that a word? Cool. So when the captain of this ship docked, like finally docked at his location, he told people, but they didn't do anything about it because the weather conditions were so bad. Like they couldn't even get out there to investigate. And obviously you can't just call somebody. So they didn't handle that correctly. Five days after this, on December 20th, 1900, the relief boat Hesperus was supposed to set sail to Island Moor to relieve one of the men. But because of how bad the storms were, it didn't leave until December 26. The ship was carrying fresh supplies and its relief person named Joseph Moore. And again, he was going to take the place of one of the men. One of the men were going to come off. It goes in a circle like that. Again, this was a routine thing that happened. The men, the lighthouse keepers knew they were coming. So Captain Harvey, who was captaining, is that a word? Again, this was a routine procedure so the men the lighthouse keepers knew they were coming so it came as a surprise when captain harvey who was manning the boat and joseph moore showed up to the island and the men weren't there to greet them the light wasn't on in the lighthouse the flag wasn't up it was just super weird usually they would have crates ready to trade out with the fresh supplies but no one was there to greet them captain harvey set off three flares but to no avail. The men never came out, so they knew they had to go investigate. So Joseph Moore went on the island by himself and was really confused. I'm just gonna read this part because this is like kind of a direct quote from Joseph Moore. He said that he suffered an overwhelming sense of foreboding as he made his way up the cliff. And actually when he reached the lighthouse, he didn't think anything was wrong. The gate was closed to the actual compound around the lighthouse and the door was firmly shut in the lighthouse, but as he made his way in, he kind of had a weird feeling. So when he got to the kitchen, he noticed that a chair was knocked over, there was still food on the table, and that all the clocks in the house had stopped, which I don't know why that's so scary, but it is to me. Another really weird thing he noticed was that when he made down his way down to the hall, where the men would hang their coats, two of the three coats were missing but one oil slick and boots were still sitting there so it was super weird so he went back to the boat reported what he found and more men from the ship came and helped him search the island they didn't notice anything weird that is until they went to the west landing so they had landed on the east landing but when they went around to the west landing they noticed that there was significant damage from the weather the iron railings were ripped out of the ground there was a box of supplies smashed it was just a mess so they came up with a theory that the men during the storm tried to go get something out of the rain or the storm or something and that all three of them got caught by a wave but that is so weird because these guys were literally experts at handling these kinds of situations more and a few more <laughs> more and more love that so joseph moore and a few more of the men stayed behind because obviously people had to man the lighthouse and robert harvey sent a telegram on december 26 1900 to the northern lighthouse board that says and i'm gonna read it directly a dreadful accident has happened at flannan's the three keepers ducat marshall and the occasional have disappeared from the island on our arrival there this afternoon no sign of life would have been seen on the island Fired a rocket, but as no response was made, managed to land more, who went up to the station but found no keepers there. The clocks were stopped and other signs indicated that the accident must have happened about a week ago. Poor fellows, they must have been blown over the cliffs or drowned trying to secure a crane or something like that. Night coming on, we could not wait to make something as to their fate. I have left more McDonald boymaster and two seamen on the island to keep the light burning until you make other arrangements will not return to oban until i hear from you i have re repeated this wire to muirhead in case you are not at home i will remain at the telegraph office tonight until it closes if you wish to wire me tea so if you remember robert muirhead was the man that dropped off these three men originally and he was like really like 
taken aback personally by this because these men were not only his colleagues but his friends. So he actually went to Island more to find something and he found the logbook. So again, I'm going to read these directly and the entries were said to be written by Marshall and they go like this. December 12th, Gale, North by Northwest, sea lashed to fury, stormbound 9 p.m. Never seen such a storm. Everything ship shape, Ducat irritable. irritable. 12 p.m., storm still raging, wind steady, storm bound, cannot go out, ship past sounding foghorn, could see lights of cabins, Ducat quiet, MacArthur crying. December 13th, storm continued through night, wind shifted west by north, Ducat quiet, MacArthur praying. 12 noon, gray daylight, me, Ducat, and MacArthur prayed. December 15th, 1 p.m., storm ended, sea calm, God is over all. T. So from these entries, you can see that that really harsh storm was on December 15th. So whatever happened to the men happened after that big storm with the iron railings pulled out. So their first assumption of the men being taken over by a wave didn't seem to hold up anymore. Another thing that's strange about these entries was that nobody else on the sea reported storms like this during these days. They happened like after. Another interesting point about the logbooks is that again, these men were seasoned professionals. Like I don't think they would be crying, but also you don't really know someone's emotional state just because they're experienced at sea. So, but a lot of people were confused about that. Like why were they so scared that it was just a storm? So yeah, that's basically all the story we have so now we're going to get into some theories the biggest theory is that the men really were washed away by a wave email the men were washed away by a wave like it was a freak wave that overtook them but then it's just so weird because supposedly there was no storm during the time they went missing but we obviously don't know this was so long ago also it's weird that no bodies washed ashore because you know how tides roll there would obviously be bodies coming up so the northern lighthouse board actually thinks that ducat and who is it marshall were securing something and then macarthur saw from where he was like a freak wave coming so he tried to run out which is why the chair was overturned maybe and the his jacket wasn't taken to go warn them but then they all got overtaken by the wave which seems the most likely when you look at the theories but let's continue to more but also about that theory why was the door firmly shut and the gate compound sh shut like i don't they wouldn't have been able to do that so i don't know it's super weird there's also a theory that the men went crazy and killed each other which is likely to we see stuff like that happen all the time this theory does come from the logbook entries but i do have bad news those are fabricated. It never says anywhere about the emotional state of the men. So I think people added that for more dramatic effect, but why would they do that when it's like actually a missing person's case? I don't understand. And also it said that Marshall wrote in it, right? Yeah, it says that Marshall wrote in it, but he was like a subordinate of Ducat. Ducat was like the main guy. Why would he be writing about him like crying or like being scared when Ducat could read that? He wouldn't do that. Although there's no entry, like this that doesn't mean that that didn't happen you know like it doesn't mean that the men didn't go crazy there's also obviously extreme theories because of how weird the island is and like people think it has superstitious powers like some people think like a sea monster came to get them alien abduction pirates foreign spies came to take them which I mean, you never know, but you would think there'd be evidence, but there's just so much like hearsay with this case that we just, I don't think we'll ever know, but I think the most credited theory is that a freak wave just took them because you can be skilled in whatever, like Siegfried and Roy, they got attacked by lions, like, you know. So the lighthouse is still there to this day and in 1971 it became fully automated and it's visited like maybe a few times a year for maintenance but people in ships that have passed by it say that sometimes like the wind sounds like they're saying the names of the lighthouse keepers and everyone just is so scared of it and I hope that was interesting to you because Gerard Butler is coming out with a movie and he's in it and it's called The Vanishing I'm pretty sure The Vanished and it's about this story. Um, but yeah, that was my first attempt. I'm sorry that this wasn't like a funny video, but 
I hope you enjoyed it. It's just so weird. Like, obviously, it was probably the wave, but then with the whole gate being shut and stuff, it's just why. And then why didn't he have his coat? I don't know. But anyways, I hope you liked it. I hope I did an okay job. I tried to be more serious, but I feel like I'm just way too perfectionist. Like, I would probably have to read the script over and over again and memorize it to actually be happy, but... That's why I kind of started just like winging it at then. I love my camera. Well, that's that. I hope you guys liked it. Tell me your theories below. Super weird. And I love you. Goodbye.